Because you have to learn how to recognize the power on the inside of you that God created in you when you were being born the day of your birth. Put your birthday there, August the 29th, 1972. When you came out of your mama, the doctors heard, what? But hell, her purpose, destiny, a game changer, a nation shifter. That's you. Come on, somebody needs to say that in here. That's me. I'm that. Some of y'all need to remind yourself that tonight. Thank you, musician. You can stay with me for just a second, will you? The singers, y'all killed it in here. You may be seated. I'm so honored because I get to preach in Nigeria and I get to preach in all kinds of places. And I was thinking about how I got here. When she was singing, Minister Chevelle was singing. She was singing about, I never knew that you were going to do this. I never knew. And I need some of y'all in this room tonight to stop for just a second. And think about where you are. Not, not, not what you are staring at right now in the natural. But what your host. You got some Holy Ghost up in you. That everybody's telling you, go lay down in a corner, die. You ain't never going to recover from this. You are tore up from the floor. up. You're the black sheep of the family. You went through that pandemic and you lost everything. You lost your loved ones. Just, 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 just go to a corner. I need you to right now think about you sitting up in JCC right now. And how what was supposed to take you out really took you over. And here's the, here's the key. If you don't learn how to see yourself out of it, this is how the enemy gets you because the enemy's a punk. He is the only fool that ever got kicked out of heaven. And he's mad because you're the apple of God's eye now. And let me just tell you something, JCC. The enemy is not fighting you because you're weak. He's fighting you because there's something on the inside of you that the enemy doesn't want you to find out about. Because the enemy don't mess around with people that ain't got something going on. Thieves don't rob empty vaults. You being picked on because there's something on the inside of you and we celebrate in 10 years. We're not just celebrating 10 years at JCC. But because you are a part of the body, the same blessing that is on pastors is on you. So either you're going to get in the flow or you're going to sit and cry. What you going to do? Which one you going to do? You're going to be a victim in your own story or you're going to get yourself up and you're going to praise your way through and you're going to push yourself into victory. You're going to tell yourself every day, as long as I ain't dead, God, you ain't done. What you going to do? Look at your neighbor and say, what you going to do? What you going to do? You done talked about it long enough. You done cried about it long enough. You done stood in every healing line. You done stood in worship on your face. And nothing's changed. What you going to do about it? So I researched today. The number 10 is the beginning of a new cycle. Y'all like, what does that mean? Here's what we're going to do up in JCC tonight. Whatever I say, you shout. You're like, what does 10 mean? It means a new cycle. It means a new season. It means a new chapter. It means your prodigal is coming home. It means JCC is debt free, paid off with campuses all over Atlanta. It means you ain't driving no hoopty. That's it. That's what I like. Number 10, it means new cycle. The, the number 10 is mentioned 242 times in the Bible and has special meaning. And here's what the meaning is. It means authority. It means completeness of order. So right now in the next 30 minutes in this place, whatever is discombobulated in your life, 
whatever chaos and confusion you got hanging on your coattail you gotta shake it off why because I'm walking in completeness and order responsibility is yours you are obligated to walk out the call of God on your life some of you lost loved ones you've grieved long enough you cried long enough because now you've got legacy to carry out when I was praying today in my bed God said legacy you got legacy to carry out when your daddy died you got his legacy to carry out when your wife died your husband died your kid died your mama died your aunt died you got legacy to carry out so hit yourself on your chest and say it's time to get up I prophesy a divine acceleration I prophesy a divine acceleration Here's what God's doing in this season. It's a divine acceleration for the, for the not fake and phony. It's for the, some of y'all always hear, the good guy always finishes last. Nah, not in this new season. God is exposing the real. He's exposing the ones that kept their heart right when they could have got bitter. Divine acceleration to you who are not faking it. Faking it. You know what that means? How you living when you out of here? What you doing in your private time? What you watching? What you sneaking around doing, acting like that addiction is stronger than God? Because the only reason you're reaching for anything other than God is because you ain't let some things go. You believe in God when you can shout and yell at the top of your lungs. But we see who you really are with the way you treat your waitress, your spouse, your kids, your job, still in time in the stock room, looking at social media pages, going late, coming late to church. Well, I'm just late. It's just who I am. Well, then you won't get the promotions of the kingdom. Because people see your deeds, but God sees your heart. Divine acceleration was the word he gave me for this tonight. Divine acceleration means everybody that's in this building and watching online. That if you get your heart into position, if he says in Amos 9, 13, that he's going to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. He's going to bless you so good that your head is about to spin. He says in Psalms 46 and 10 to be still and know that I am God. He says in Proverbs 3 to trust in the Lord with all your heart. All your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. If all of these scriptures I just quoted in the matter of one minute. It means if you do what I just said you will walk in the abundance of God. That means your marriages will be blessed. Your kids will be blessed. Your hearts will be healed. It's the season for the pure hearted to be elevated. I need you to tell yourself. This is the title of my sermon. I'm in transition. I'm in transition. You weren't overlooked. You are hidden for such a time as this. If that college would have opened up like you wanted it to, you would have become something you ain't supposed to be. Because you would have tried to fit in the fabric of all those other people. But you're called for more. You've got an anointing on you that when you walk into a room, the atmosphere shifts. And if you would have went to that college, you would have become like them instead of him. If that marriage would have worked out, you would have never found the rock at the bottom. 
If you wouldn't have walked through that divorce, you wouldn't have had to go get a job and fall in love with the people because you had to learn to love people when you hated them. If God would have given you that one bedroom apartment that you wanted so you could get out of your mama's house with all your kids, you would have been tied down for a year and not been able to get the five bedroom house he's going to try to give you. Why? Because if he's a God of more than enough, and if I'm in transition, I'm not really over here stuck at all. I'm just in a place where God is preparing me for my next. Because he's never quiet. He's never, he's, he's never ever not doing something in the background. But because of social media, we're stuck. Looking at everybody else's highlight reels. Wishing we had there. Her husband looks like he stepped out of GQ. Yours looks like he stepped out of DQ. And you're mad. <laughs> Why? Because of social media. It says in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to bless you and not harm you, give you a future. I need you to open your heart tonight and see that he ain't done with you at all. He's got his hand pressing down on you. He's given some of you resuscitation. He's, he's given some of you some CPR and some situations that you thought was going to kill you, but it didn't kill you. It just restarted you in a new season. You ever found yourself feeling off? Anybody? Ever found yourself with no peace? It's the enemy. Because the enemy always wants you to go back to what he delivered you, God delivered you from. You just don't feel peace in situations. Situations that you used to feel right at home in. You used to go nay nay and not pray pray and feel just fine. You're like, boom, shaka, like I like a boom. And then you could go Sunday, fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. You don't want to run over. You want a full-time God on a part-time relationship. That's what we want. We want God to be there for us when we need him. But since this pandemic happened, Jordan... Now all of a sudden, we come to church some and we feel like it. And then we got to have a whole Christian fish on the back of our car. Or wear a cross around our neck. To show that we are Christians. Clap back on social media, the cancel culture. Christians are some of the meanest people on the planet. Right? Have you seen that in the pandemic? I'm like, save them, God. I'm so sorry they're doing this to your children. Why? Because anywhere the enemy can get in your heart to pollute you, even if it means you're religious, the worst place to be is a place that you feel like you're too saved for your own good. When you don't feel peace and situation you used to fit perfectly in, that's God calling you higher. Becoming new doesn't just begin and end with salvation. It's a daily process. We must be born again and again and again and again. That's why the Bible says to die to your flesh. Daily. What does that mean? When I realize that there are things in my life that are holding me hostage. Secret sins. Fear. Fear. False evidence appearing real. Fear. Won't let you write that book that's going to save thousands that you'll never even know about. Fear that will not let you get loved again by somebody because the other one broke you. Fear of stepping out in faith. I hear this all the time. I'm not afraid of 
failure, I'm afraid of success. I'm like hogwash. That's foolishness. The truth is you're afraid to put yourself back out there again because what if the same thing happens to you that happened before? What if the rider dies in your life really ain't rider dies at all? Because the last ones weren't. See, the healing may not be your fault, but the, the pain may not be your fault, but the healing is your responsibility. That's what jacks you up. And then we get in church and sing and fall on the floor and we don't really let God do the surgery that he needs to do in our lives and we're not being born again and again and again. To be present with God, we must be absent of the old ways. You ever come to church and be like, I don't know what they feeling. I ain't feeling nothing. It's because you, 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 you ain't living right. You're not living right. Because you're either saved or you ain't. When you find yourself constricted by an old way of thinking, in an old way of doing things, by old actions, it's time to move. I think God allows us sometimes to lay in our beds at night. Anybody struggle with anxiety? It's real. We even can Zoom call psychotherapists that will give you Xanax right there without ever seeing you. Because the enemy doesn't want you to believe that you deserve to be free in your mind. Why? Because he wants you to continue to stay in the old way. Because as long as you're staying in the old way and dancing with the devil, the devil don't change. He changes you. Wow. So if we focus on what's happening in our lives more than we are focusing on where we're going. You may not be where you want to be, but bless God, you ain't staying where you are. Why? I'm going to pull myself. I'm not staying here today. I realize that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I'm breaking this thing for my kids. I'm breaking it for my health. I'm breaking up with this emotional eating for my future. Because the devil can't mess with me, so he's getting me in my mind. And he can't take me out, so he's wearing me out every day fighting the old devils that can't do nothing to me. So we're magnifying it. Sometimes you got to tell yourself, i got to get out of here. you got to look in that mirror and you say, i got to get up. I gotta get out of here. I gotta stop stalking them on Facebook. I gotta stop stalking them. I gotta stop calling their mama. I didn't even like their mama when we were married. I gotta stop letting people keep me updated on people that ain't in my life no more. I gotta guard my heart because Proverbs 3 says to guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. I gotta get out. Even if I got to fight my way out. Even if I got to pull my way out, Pastor. Even if every day I got to put post-it notes all over my house. If I got to lay in my bed at night and put my leg over on him so that we can rekindle a relationship that's going to hell in a handbasket because the enemy knows that two is better than one. If I got to swallow my pride Get up and do what I don't want to do because you're worth fighting for, and we're gonna do this thing. I gotta get out of this depression. I gotta get out of this fear. I gotta get out of this bankruptcy. I gotta get out of this cancer diagnosis. I gotta get out of this anxiety. Whoa! Preach, Kim! I can't stay here. How about live this barren place? This is not my whole life. This is just a chapter that I stopped in.
Stop judging me off a chapter you walked in on. Because I ain't staying here. And I can't afford to have people in my life that are trying to keep me there. It ain't my fault that I cut you off with the scissors you handed me. Because where I'm taking, where God has taken me, I can't have people talking death into what he's doing in my next season. You are responsible for getting up. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I know that when you can't pay your bills, you're looking at the checking account, wondering when God's going to come through. You've done everything right, and He still ain't come through, and you want to throw in the towel. That's when you got to push harder. I'm done with this barren season. I'm bigger than this. I'm done drinking a bottle of wine at night because I hate my life. I'm done sitting at tables with people that gossip about people. They use prayer, prayer, prayer time as a gossip time. Your bonding is bonding with messy people because God can't bless anointed and you can't be messy and anointed. You know the tea on everybody? Because you're messy. Because you can't be messy and anointed. There ain't nothing in your way but you. There ain't nobody that can touch you. There ain't nobody that can steal your dream. There ain't nobody that can steal your purpose. There ain't no... Y'all, 36 years ago, I just turned 52 months ago. 10 years ago, I was working at Bloomingdale's making $9 an hour. Driving a knockoff Bentley. It's a 300 Chrysler. That thing had me on the side of the road every single day overheating. Because God was getting my attention. Why? Because where I'm taking you right now, you're too cocky for your own good in your knockoff Bentley. I need you to smell like the sheep. Where I'm taking you, I need the world to be able to look at you and identify me with skin on it. So what if your Bloomingdale seasons is a season where God's just preparing you for more than you can even pray or ask? What if God is... Hmm... The delay has a purpose. And sometimes this guy waiting on you to level up. You can't have the glory of the penthouse heaven with the mindset of the front porch. I can't. You got to catch it as it's coming out. Sometimes you get so used to the basement that you stop on the front porch when God had really called you to the penthouse. But because you were so used to the basement because your mama was one way, your daddy was one day, your ex was one day, now your ex is another way. And all five of them crazy. That now you're ready to settle on the front porch because at least you can breathe. And God is saying, I called you for greater. I called you for penthouse. The wealth of the wicked is yours. I don't care if you got a 275 credit score. You hear me? God is a kind of God that wants to show out. If you didn't have a 275 credit score, how are you going to show out? You just got rid of your house on the courtrooms. They took your house. Where was God building the message? Everybody's got a story, but yours is a bestseller. The delay was for a purpose, and sometimes it's God waiting on you just to level up. Why? Why? Because it will work if you work it. We blaming God for everything. We blaming God because we lazy. If God wants me to have that job, no, you need to fill out some applications.
God's after me. And you get mad at everybody in the church because they won't pay your rent. Go get a job. The devil's after my car. No, you need an oil change. The devil's after my marriage. No, you need to get your kid that should be in his own room out of the middle of you and your husband and turn you on some Lionel Richie. Hello? Is it me you're looking for? The devil don't want your spouse. The devil wants to take me out. I'm unhealthy. Quit eating all that fried food, sitting on the couch, scratching your behind, eating bonbons. Get up. The Holy Spirit will always warn you when something feels off. You hear the doctor say, listen to your body. That's the same way with God. He tells you, pump the brakes. Y'all, I was in Bible school. I went to World Harvest Bible School with Pastor Rod Parsley. He scared me to death. But not enough to act right. And he saw me looking at this boy and he's like, I am not blessing that. And I would sneak out and go on dates with this boy. And he would, he, Pastor Rob would be behind me with his lights flickering. And I'd be falling in the seat. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So instead of being fearful, I just left and married him. And every single thing that Pastor Rod told me that was going to happen, happened. It was hell. 18 years of hell. And people would say, didn't you see the red flags? Yeah, but I thought it was a carnival. Why? Because somewhere inside of us, don't we think we can fix everything? In relationships with builder bears It ain't exactly what I want. You better pump them brakes. Right? Because where God's taking you, you wouldn't be sitting in JCC tonight if this wasn't a divine appointment. This was a moment with destiny. Where God is basically saying, it's a, new, it's a new cycle. And all those old things that you've been shameful of, worried about. Once you came to know Jesus, all old things were passed away. So while you're still telling God how bad you were, he can't even remember what you're talking about. But God is such a good God. That he knew before I was ever in my mother's womb that I was going to have a hard time being obedient. And he said, I'm going to let you go down some of the, way, some of the wrong detours. Because that's what he'll do. Sometimes he'll give you exactly what you want to show you it ain't what you needed. Sometimes God will wreck your plans when he sees your plans are about to wreck you. Sometimes he's like, nah, I need you to go down that path. You go on, girl. You go say I do. Pray. I'm going to let you be crazy for a few years. You're going to nay, nay, not pray, pray. And then I'm going to let you hit rock bottom to find out who I am. Because your problem is you've been around ministry. Your daddy was a preacher. Your mama was a preacher. And you got so used to shouting and falling in the floor that you forgot you had a part to play. You have a part to play, Kimberly. And you got to get to know me in order to play that part. So I'm going to let you hit rock bottom and you're going to move back in with your mom at 36 years old. With two little kids that need you to have it together. And you're going to be such a train wreck that everybody's going to walk out of your life. You ain't going to have no friends because you can't be a friend. And in those seasons is why I'm about to wake up something in you. And then I'm going to pull you all the way back. And I'm going to take you. And I'm going to pull you back like a slingshot. And I'm going to let you fly. And everybody's going to be saying stuff like, where did you come from? Oh, my God, this was overnight. But they don't realize that this has been 36 years of me doing the dance with you. And finally, whenever you got to a place where you were ready, say, I'm ready. When you really get to a place where you hate something, you've got to hate something in order for it to change. It ain't going to change if you don't hate it. 
The Bible says, blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the seat of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful for His delight is in the law of the, door, of, the, of, the, of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by the river's water. Now, here's the key. Counsel is when you put people in a position God should have been in. So who you listen to in these seasons is probably a lot of the reason why you still stuck. Because counsel means you're very important and you probably carry a title. The counsel. And then what happens is we get into places of being stuck, like walking. Who we walking with? Who we standing with? Who we sitting with? God wants to take you to the next level and you are not meant to stay in one place. You're meant to move. You're meant to evolve. We hear so often about being born again and putting off the old and putting on the new. What does that even look like? Have y'all ever thought about what it looks like to take off the old and put on the new? Listen to what Luke 5.36 says. You ready? I'm going to take you on a fast journey. It said, then Jesus gave them this illustration. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and uses it to patch an old garment. For then the new garment would be ruined and the new patch wouldn't even match the old garment. You see where I'm going? That's why some of y'all very uncomfortable right now. Because you outgrow people just like you outgrow clothes. The old garment wouldn't even match the new. And no one puts new wine in old wineskin. For the new wine would burst the wineskin, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine must be stored in new wineskin. But no one who drinks the old wine seems to want the new wine. Why? Why? Because it's uncomfortable going to the new. What does that mean? Have you ever seen people that God is standing here saying, I'm giving you better. And they stay with worse. It's almost like the attention, they like the attention being broken gets them. Yeah, I'd rather just drive this hoopty that's not guaranteeing me to get anywhere than trust God to go to the dealership and try for my dream car. Planning your funeral because you got a bad doctor's report. Instead of saying, I shall live and not die. Devil, you should have messed with somebody else. Because I can take a licking and keep on ticking. I got 13 lives. Why? Because as long as I have a pulse, God, you got a plan. And I ain't going nowhere. The old is just fine, they say. It's almost like, Pastor, we get to a place where we're afraid to step back into where God Wants us to be because we've gotten comfortable in this pandemic. I went to the doctor and the doctor told me, she's like, girl, you're fat. I said, how? She said, you went from keto into Edo and during the pandemic. <laughs> I said, what? She said, you fat? I said, no, it's the, it's the, it's the Mr. T chains around my neck. She said, no, ma'am. She said, you, you're, you're going to have cholesterol issues. High blood pressure. If you don't allow yourself to get rid of the sugar, sugar is more addicted than drugs. I got in the car and I was like, God, take this sugar demon out of me because I like candy. I'm a child. I like Skittles. I like Twizzlers. But I'm 50. <laughs> I ain't 18 no more. I can't be doing those things. And so I'm laying in the car. I'm praying in the car. I'm like, God, take this, take this spirit out of me that wants this candy. And he said, put it out of your house. You got to help me help you. 
I want to give you the keys to the kingdom, but you got to come with me. Right? The worst thing you can do is to be too holy for God to use. Even as a believer, you can enslave yourself by hiding behind your camouflage. If we're walking into a new cycle tonight, because you're a part of JCC, what's the old mess you need to leave in this place? Care more what people think about you than what God knows about you? God brings us into JCC to recenter us from our haughty, arrogant, and self absorbed selves. To create in us a clean heart, oh God. To make us humble, obedient, and self-aware of ourselves. I never understand people that can't see themselves. It's like they lose the fear of the Lord. And then it becomes all about you instead of all about him. The leveling place that I feel that is in this room tonight will remind you there is no difference between the sinner and the saint who's saved by grace. See, we hear this all the time. God's going to come back and he's going to get it. He's going to get them sinners and they're going to go to hell. I think more Christians are going to go to hell than sinners. Do you know why? Because Christians know better. Sinners don't know better. Christians will be coming up into church cheating with everybody in the building and worshiping. Giving prophetic words. No fear of God whatsoever. Scrooge, mean, oh, foul in their hearts. That's who hell's for. We're sitting in your laps tonight, Ada. We're at 10. We're at 10, y'all. We're at 10. It's a new cycle. It's a new season. It's a new chapter. And what God is going to do in the next six months, in the next six months, by March 2023, if you get your heart into a position where no weapon formed against you shall prosper, he's going to take you to a place that you could have never even put up on a dream board. Then you can see, I never thought that you were going to favor me like this because I'm walking proof that everywhere I go, it is only God that got me here. They gave up on me. But God said, no, 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 no. Let them sleep. But what I'm about to do in your life, they're going to need their rest. You're going to be an example. The most wonderful thing about spending time with God is you get to know yourself. When you're in the presence of God, I'm laying in my bed today and I'm just shunned. You got to be able to speak in tongues. Because that's a language the devil can't hear. That's like your secret weapon. That's me saying, God, I don't know what I'm saying. But I know my heart's saying something that's really good because I'm feeling the Holy Ghost hippie jibbies. You can't give of yourself if you don't know yourself. You don't know what you bring to the table. Then you don't know yourself. Every time people come on my post and say, there ain't no good men left. There ain't no good women left. I'm like, there is. They just ain't looking at you. Why? Because you don't know yourself. They ain't looking at you. Why? Because you're messy. Because you put up posts like, I need a man that can handle me. Well, that means you ain't bringing no peace to the table if he got to handle you. What am I saying? In the next six months here at JCC, you're going to have to get here early. You're not going to be able to space the chairs out. I'm going to tell you why. Because a revival is in this house. A revival is in you. And the minute you get your heart right, you will stay in stability. You'll stop falling out every time something doesn't go the way you want it to go. Why? Because we're in a new cycle. I'm in a new cycle which requires me to show up different. I got to show up different. 
I gotta show up like I wanna be. Wherever I wanna be, I gotta show up that way. You want a nicer car? Drive over to the to the car wash and wash your hoopty. Clean out your bag, your bags of McDonald's in there. Get you some air freshener in there. Take off your moo and put on an outfit. And get yourself in position of where I want to go. Why? Because I'm walking in the Amos 913. And I can't be in a place where I stop my blessing because my mind ain't right. Because what's in my heart comes out of my mouth. What's in my heart comes out of my... Oh. Why? My life is what I make it. It ain't your daddy's fault. He might have been jacked up. But you made it. Your daddy walked out on you and your mama and your mama had to struggle to raise you. It's because God needed the seed to get you here. But he also knew that he didn't want you to become like your daddy. So he said, I got to remove this generational curse out of your life. So I used him to get you here. But now you're all the father, the alpha and the omega, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's your daddy. That's your husband. That's your kid's daddy. I said I wasn't going to scream tonight. It was so funny because I put on a pair of pants that I used to wear when I was pushing 200. I, I lost weight. Took the ho-hos out of my house. And got delivered. And I put on a pair of pants the other day where the fabric had pulled because of my thick thighs. And I love them pants. I said, Mimi, my mom, I said, can you, can you fix these pants because I want to wear them? She said, girl, no, that's a problem. It's like new skin and old skin. You're trying to put yourself in a pair of pants that you ain't got no business in now because every time you put them on, you're going to remember something of your past. And God is saying, no, when I stretch them, it messed up your hem. So now the hem ain't even aligned. And that's what's happening in some of your lives. You're still trying to put yourself in a season that God's already delivered you from. Because it's more comfortable to go to the familiar. And then before you know it, you're torn. You're torn between this and that. Torn between, do I want a key lime pie? Or do I want to feel better in my clothes? Do I want to go back to that joker that abused me? Or do I want to wait for God to bring me somebody that's going to blow my mind? Do I want to stay at a job that I got to go home and drink a bottle of wine because my boss makes me cry every day because I have a degree in that? Or do I want to trust God with something greater because God is not a God of chaos and confusion? Do I want to keep dating Bozo when God's got Boaz for me? Because I've already been with him for 13 years and he keeps saying he's going to put a ring on it but he ain't put a ring on it yet. Do I want to keep letting me lay my head in Delilah's lap and pray for Ruth? Until? Or do I want to clean everything off of me? I got to get up. I got to get up. Because my life ain't going to look like this. Why? Because I've been praying, God, enlarge my territory. Father, I thank you that you trust me when I didn't even trust myself. I thank you that when I thought I was going to go under, I went over. I thank you, Lord, that I am stepping onto the stepping stones of all the stones people have. They threw them at me and I used them as stepping stones. Because my heart was right. Torn between the old and the new. It's got us showing up as imposters. We ain't happy. Making idols out of things. Trying to keep up with the Joneses, no pun intended. When the Joneses don't even like themselves. Most of the time. 
We cleave to the old because it's familiar. It's scary to let go of the old and embrace the new. One hand on yesterday and one hand on today. Social media will get you jacked up. Instead of blocking them, you're stalking them. Everybody wants to be a diamond, but nobody wants to get cut. And sometimes God will wreck your spirit to save your soul. Why? Because he needs you to know he's the Abba Father. New wine can't flow in old wine skin. Old fabric cannot create new clothes. And a torn spirit cannot fully know God. Your life has to be united with God. You got to seek God's direction for your life. You got to walk forward in faith. You got to put feet to your faith. Some of y'all been sleeping on your dreams. Every time you start to take a step, you hear your daddy tell you, you ain't no good. You'll never amount to nothing. That is a lie from the pit of hell. The devil is in your ear telling you every day there's another storm coming. And baby, you got to get into a position where you can stand flat footed and tell the devil, devil, bring it home because I am the storm. You should have taken me out before because I'm getting my, 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 my peace back, my joy back, my sanity back. Praying for better but staying with worse because it's familiar. Did you know the religious people gave God more problems than sinners? They called him wine bibber, challenged his philosophy, and you mad at who? They did it to him. They, you think they don't do it to you? Haters are confused fans. God uses haters to get your name out there. How will you ever get your name out there if you ain't in rooms you ain't in? Sometimes being somebody to people is more important than being somebody to God, which is being obedient. One ounce of obedience will do more for you than all the prayer. Will you accept something new in this season? My God's a disruptor. He's a disruptor. He says, no, no. You've been settling. But I'm about to bring you out. Why? Because he thought I was worth saving. So he came and changed my life. He thought I was worth keeping. So he cleaned me up inside. He thought I was to die for. So he sacrificed his life. So you could be free, so you could be whole, so you could tell everyone you know. Why? Because he knows your name. Your name is written in the heavenly lights of Vegas. Your name, when you walk into a room, in fact, your name is in rooms your feet hadn't even walked in yet. Why? Because it's a new cycle. The God I know is disruptive. He will challenge your ideas. He will call you out on the carpet. Because he's a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. You got to be bold enough to disagree with those you are in counsel with that is ungodly.
You got to do some things in this next six months. March. I keep hearing March. Which means you got to start tying up some loose ends. You got to get out of your bed and pray instead of laying in your bed. Read my mind. Read my mind. I'm just so defeated. And you better open your mouth. And you need to begin to lay hands on yourself. Get your Crisco anointed and say, Father, I'm about to lay hands on everything in my house. And devil, I'm coming for you and all your stupid little imps. And I'm about to wreak hell. I'm about to break these shackles off of me. God is a chain breaker, not a promise breaker. He hasn't taken his hands off your life because you took your hands off your life. You quit. He didn't quit. He knew you were going to take a rest. Somebody's given up in this room. And now you're putting all your old wine skin back together. You've been tired. You've been weary. You've given up on yourself. Y'all, Yo, I did not even preach my first sermon till I was 41. I lost everything. But God would not use me as long as I was putting junk in my old wineskin. I had to completely break up with the old self and find the new self. I couldn't have one foot in and one foot out. I couldn't lay in my bed talking negative. I had to begin to find me some worship songs I could prophesy over myself. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. That song right there, you don't need no music. You can just start walking around your house decreeing and declaring and prophesying and speaking in tongues and claim back your peace. You got to be bold enough. We have too many coward Christians. Debating on, on Facebook and Instagram. Making people think God's crazy. Because you don't love like God. The Bible says in the, the, the commandment that ain't even a choice to yours is to love thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all of everything that you are. And to love your neighbor as yourself. So that means i got to get myself in position. You know when he finally started getting me free? I lay in my bed every night. Kill him! And I pray for God to kill my ex with a train. Because I know if a train killed him, Benny Hinn couldn't bring him back to life. I was bitter. I was bitter. You know when he finally started letting me get free? When I started laying hands on myself every night. God, I want to forgive, but I don't know how. I want to forgive God. I want to be free. I don't want to be having to drink to go to sleep. I don't want to, be, I don't want to have to be dating people that I know ain't good for me. I don't want to feel bad because I was a terrible mom. I want to forgive me. And then them. And I realized I was forgiven. Because about two weeks in, I wasn't praying for God to kill him no more. I was like, God, don't kill him. Just hurt him. <laughs> Baby steps. Now I can pray, pray. Y'all, I ain't even kidding. I'm still hood and holy. I'm still from the south side of heaven. You hear me? You want me as a friend. I will pray you out of hell. I'll be like, get your butt up. What you doing? So my question is, are you stuck in the old? The real you. Who's the real you? It's a new cycle. Pastors, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. The hunger that's in your heart. You know how many churches I walk in and the preacher sits on the front row with his hands like this? You can always tell the heart of a church by the pastor's worship. That's who you want to be leading. This came in the pandemic, but this ain't where you stay in. I can see a Bible school in here. I can see school. 
but this ain't where you're staying for church. Because you got to have room for what God is about to do in your life. Because, Pastor, when you could have got defeated when your wife died, instead you got up again and you began to lead. You ain't seen nothing yet. question is should I hold on or should I let go that's your question tonight in this room how can you say scripture don't work if you don't work it because you can't really be depressed And serve God, right? Why? Because how can you be depressed when you're on your knees every day? Praying in the spirit as long as you need to till you break that demonic devil off you. But see, we've gotten accustomed in this culture to be like, oh, my mama had it, so I got it. And then we all sensitive. Oh, don't you go there, Kim. Don't you? I can go there because I struggle with it. I got on Ambien, y'all. That's when I gained all my weight. Cause Ambien makes you eat in your sleep. I'd wake up with spaghetti all over my face. And then I was mad because I couldn't even enjoy the spaghetti. And I realized, ah, oh, I'm in the third heaven sleeping so much I can't even remember eating my spaghetti. No, no, we ain't doing this on today. Because that means this depression medicine is making me stay in a place I want to get out of. It's making me okay with my situation. And I got to hate it in order for it to change. That drug that you're taking to numb your pain. You better flush it down the toilet. That porn that you're watching. To numb your pain. You treat your husband any old way like he's your mo- like you're his mama? God can't bless it. Can't even hug your kid because he looks like your ex-husband. You married him? No, we gotta get our hearts right, y'all. And then we gotta get up. Say, I gotta get up. I gotta get up. I'm in a new cycle. I'm in a new cycle. What God is about to do in my life, I gotta be ready, man. I gotta be ready. I can't keep giving CPR to dead situations. I can't st- I can't be acting one way at church and another way behind closed doors. I gotta get myself ready. Sometimes you have to stretch out your weather hand. I bet that man with the wither, I bet when he said, stretch out your hand, I bet he put the good one out because that's what we do in church. He's like, no, I said stretch out your broke hand. Sometimes you got to stretch out your wither. Sometimes you got to crawl to God. You got to stop pressing up against God and you got to touch him. Sometimes you have to face, you have to stretch out your rod. Sometimes you have to give your two fish and two loaves of bread. You're praying to feed 5,000, but you're holding on to the lunch like it's all you got. You got your happy meal. And God's like, I'm about to give you an overflow, but you can't, you ain't even tithing. Can't even give 10%, 10 cent on a dollar? That ain't yours anyway. Wonder why you broke? God is saying in this season, into your old wineskin. It is a new cycle and your pastors need you to step up. Your husband, your wife, your kids, your future, your destiny. I was in special ed my whole life. And I'd be like, oh, I can't. 
I remember God telling me, you're going to write a book. I said, have you seen my statuses? You got to be in the Holy Ghost to read my Facebook status. Because there ain't no commas. I just write like I talk. He said, oh, girl, you're going to write a book. You're the one that going to write the book. He said, I didn't say you need to know where punctuations go. I'm going to send you people in your life that will help you put the punctuations there. And I'll never forget when I wrote my book, y'all, my daddy ain't famous. I'm doing more in my life than anybody in my entire family has ever done. I was raised in a religion that said women couldn't preach. I'm pastoring a whole, I just became a bishop. A woman. And here's the funny part. The man that ordained me was the man I walked out on and went and married that dude. Full circle. Why? Because I got right. My daddy ain't famous. Nobody gave me this. I was sitting in my car doing videos with smoke coming out because remember I was on the side of the road. And smoke was coming out of my car. See, I stopped, I stopped putting stuff in old wineskin. And I began to say, no, 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 no. We're not going to dance with nothing from my past. I say no. In secret. People see your deeds. God sees our heart. Remember that. I'm sitting on the side of the road. 40 years old. Smoke's coming out of my car and I'm on 75. And all I could think about when the smoke was coming out was Broadway. God, you think of everything. You've given me my own smoke machine. And I pulled my camera out and I did a video and that video went viral. What am I saying to you? God will take the wicked and he will turn it around to work for you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It don't matter where you've been. It don't matter who your daddy was, who your mama was. It don't matter if you've been married five times or one. He said, get up and let me do what I need to do in your life. Why? Because I love to use people with the worst past to create the best futures. That video went viral. And within the first year, I preached on every platform of every man that I would listen to preach as I was going to work. T.D. Jakes, thank you for being my mentor. Wrote my first book in $30,000. Because sometimes your family is the last to support you. Because they know you. They remember you nay nay and they remember belling you out of jail. But God will send complete strangers to support your ministry. Stop getting stuck on stupid. I felt like I got to say stupid. I started to say silly, but I needed to say stupid because some of y'all are like, yeah, girl, I know. You got to stop getting stuck on things that can't stop you. been there long enough. You've been low to bar long enough. Yeah, they dropped you. Yeah, they weren't there for you. Yeah, it stinks. Yeah, they cheated on you and embarrassed you. Yeah, you raised your kids by yourself, but you killing it. Stop detesting what you're making it through. Four years ago, Pastor Rod calls me and says, I want you to come preach at Dominion Camp Meeting. I thought, dear Lord, they're punking me. There's no way he's going to let me come preach. I was so bad his Bible school I was so bad and as I'm getting picked up at the airport I'm driving to the church pastor and my face is on all these billboards with all of these legends that I fangirl over 
And I started weeping and saying, God, how did this happen? I didn't know you were going to favor me like this. He said, it's because I trust you. Stand up on your feet. It don't work if you don't work it. It's called consistency. Diligence will get you there, but consistency will keep you there. And gratitude will give you more, more. What if you woke up with only the things you thanked God for yesterday? I get on people's nerves, man. I'm like, thank you. Why? Because I've been there when I had nobody. Some folk don't want to change. They would rather yell, crucify you like the woman caught in the act of adultery. But tonight, God's sitting down and writing in the dirt. He's saying, I already covered you. I already protected you. I've gone before you and I've made the crooked way straight. Here's what God is saying to you tonight. I'm so proud of you. JCC, God is so proud of you. You're crushing it. You may not be where you want to be, but you're not where you used to be. You may fall again tomorrow, but just get back up again. Stop staying home from church. Because you're struggling again. This is where you need to be. Serving. Tomorrow when Minister Chevelle comes in here and y'all are worshiping, you should be laying on the floor. Take your wig off. Leave your eyelashes at home. Leave your girdle in the drawer so you can breathe. Turn your phones off and go after God. God says, come out from among them and shake the dust off your feet. Don't try to force them to accept what they've rejected. In other words, stop giving CPR to dead situations. Stop trying to fix relationships you didn't break. I know how hard it is to let go when you want it so bad. saying they ain't good for you that rejection was not necessarily someone wanting out of your life but it was somebody God needed out of your future they rejected you because their character can't keep up with your purpose and I hear the Lord saying tonight will you trust me Ten years. It's a new cycle. Some of y'all are control freaks. And controlling people don't trust God. You're leading out of your pain. Get out of your old cycles. And get into position. I'm pushing, I'm crawling, I'm going to roll if I got to. That man at the pool of Bethesda, he laid there for 38 years. Y'all, 38 years, and when he got up, he got up. He didn't say his wither grew out, Pastor. That means his hands and feet worked. But his mind kept him stuck. Tonight, if you're in this place... It's a new cycle. Pastors, you got some millionaires in this room. 
Yo, I couldn't even buy cheese with my credit. This special ed girl just signed a six-figure book deal with HarperCollins. I still don't know where commas go. But favor follows you when you get up. God said, I need you to get up. I need you to get up. I need you to get up. I don't feel like getting up, Kim. Get up! Feelings lie to you. Your past, the best is not behind you. It's in front of you. 50 years old. Everything I touch blows up. Why? Because I'm in position. And I ain't going to let you or nobody else make me go to hell for anybody. You hear me? I'm standing firm. What you see behind closed doors is what I am in front of you. My question to you tonight is, what do you need to leave at the altar? What's stopping you? It's a new cycle. Ten years. And I know that's for JCC. And this beautiful women night with some of these men spurted in here. My question to you is, what you going to do about it? If you're in this room. I wanted to quit so bad. But quitting only prolongs you in a season you want to get out of. Quitting is easy. The pain may not be your fault, but the healing is your responsibility. Here's what God's about to do in here. He's about to break some generational curses off of you. You are not going to be your dad. Sir, you are not going to be like your dad. You're going to be like your spiritual dad. Woman of God, you are not like your mama. You are God DNA. Generational curses are real, but generational blessings are more real. Why? You know when you know when generational curses break? When it gets in front of somebody fearless and says, nah, uh <laughs> I ain't going down that path. I got a drinking problem, I won't go in front of the, of the in front of the store. It means you tell yourself, I'm not going that direction. So tonight, what do you need to break off you? Let's do it fast. Pastors need you. You can't come in here and worship fully if you don't get your whole self together. And say, God, I'm getting out of my own way. And I prophesy over you in this room, JCC, that what God has done in my life in the last 10 years, He's about to do in your life in the next four months. Six months, you're going to be walking in the overflow in March. But in four months, you're going to start to see a whole new world. It's a whole new world. And, uh, and, and bring it in 2023. You're going to feel so strong and so powerful. Because you ain't weak. You ain't weak, baby. You are strong. Everybody lift up your hands in this room. Say, Father, I'm giving you permission to start in me. You got to be careful. The devil ain't getting you a deaf, dumb spirit because you start yawning. Then you miss the breakthrough. Say, Father, I surrender. It's a new cycle. Give me a hunger for you like I've never had before. Let me feel your power. Let me feel your anointing. And if you're in this room, I just heard the Lord say, there's some of you that want to rededicate your life. There's some of you that have strayed 
you're in this room and you're like, I want to rededicate my life, I want you to lift your hand as high as you can. Come on, lift it, lift it, lift it. I want to rededicate my life. I'm about to go all in. I'm about to go all in. Come on, lift your hand. Who cares what your neighbor thinks? Come on, I want to rededicate. I see you. I want to rededicate my life. And if you're in this room and you said, I ain't never even known Jesus like I should, I need you to lift up your hand so we can do it fast, fast, fast. I see you, I see you, I see you. Now, Father, in this room, I want you to give these people that are rededicating their lives and coming to know you, give them such a hunger for you that they lay in their bed at night wanting to know more about you. On their lunch breaks, let them be open in the you version app and reading your word. Come on, open your mouth. Come on, open your mouth and begin to pray, JCC. Begin to pray, JCC. Open your mouth. Come on, some of y'all need to lay hands on some of your neighbors around you. I need you, Jesus. I need you every hour. I need you, God. I don't want to play church. I want to have a hunger for you. Put a fire down in my belly that when I walk into a room, the atmosphere shifts. Come on, pray. Pray, pray. Pray, pray. Pray, pray. Pray, pray. Come on and begin to decree and declare. Begin to decree and declare. 